Good evening, everyone, to the Vidya Game Awards for 2022. It's been seven years since we introduced Sweet Points and six years since we last explained them. Since then, we thought it was time to explain to you again what Sweet Points are, since a lot of you idiots assume it's the popular vote. We'll use this example from 2016, since you should never fix what ain't broke, and also go fuck yourselves if you think we're going to put effort in. Work smarter, not harder. In this example, we will use seven best Super Mario 64 enemies from the Half A Presses Award that you never got to vote on. As you already know by now, we only show the top five on the show. Snuff it and bullies suck too much to get shown. However, due to the magic of preferential voting, these nominees help create sweep points. Snuff it was sixth place and got 591 people to rate it over bully, and 558 people voted bully above Snuff it. When we subtract 591 from 558, we get 33 de facto sweep points. These points are added to everyone who beats Bully. We do this for every nominee until we get to the winner. Did you get all that? I know it was a lot to take in. You being an MIT theoretical physicist and all. I know you lied about your degree to get a job. You should have been a security guard like me. It's like being a Janny, but you get a gun. Anyway, I hope you enjoy the award show. And remember, if you have any further questions, be sure to keep them to yourself. Have a good trip. This program is rated MA for a mature audience. It contains adult themes, coarse language, drug use, horror, nudity, sex scenes, sexual references, violence, cringy skits, degeneracy, terrible opinions, ludicrous sweeps, brain cell loss, Australians, and basket weaving tips. Viewer discretion is advised. As a market leader in return on ad spend and return on assets, Global Acquisitions Group invites you to join our shareholder family. Together, we strive to connect the bridge between untapped market potential and direct consumer relationships by delivering hybrid casual experiences to our player base that boosts engagement with our intellectual property and brands. Thanks, Lori. Achieving our business objectives with unrivaled efficiency, our software products always hit key KPIs in user retention, engagement, and spend per install metrics. Global acquisition. Oh, shut the fuck up! What's up, gamers, and welcome to the 2022 Video Game Awards. I would love to tell you more about the show, but we got a bit of a situation on our hands. Vidja City, the city of shitposting, and our homeland was super chill and fresh until they stepped into the picture. Some mega conglomerate called Global Acquisitions Group just moved into each part of town, bought everything up, and turned our turf into a pay-to-play hellscape. But hope isn't lost. It's only rumors, but I've heard that a bunch of smaller gangs are starting to take the city back. Speaking of which, we just got word from Dreamland Park that shit's about to go down. Let's cross there now. Jackie Chan Award for Best Character. The nominees are Kirby, Jack Garland. Yeah, she should summon on this banner. Not only are you getting a meta-defining god like Jack we Garland, do Ronnie, can we take that? Let's take his description. Away from my sight. This is the third time. Larry. I like the way you look. I guarantee. <laughs> Ricky Turd Taster. The loathsome oh, dong eater. I managed to get it right. I still love El. <laughs> Freak out, yo!
Jack Garland. Chaos. Where's Mayor Sohn? Right from the very first trailer, it was obvious that Jack was a doomed man. He would fight the demons, and then become the demons. That kind of confidence and swagger will make an audience beg to know how it all happened. But this award's bigger than Jack. Like any good hero from the pulp adventure days of yore, everything is perfectly crafted to suit him. The party members who give him shit for his grimdark attitude, the expository NPCs that he cuts off midway, and the beautifully crafted gothic world they occupy. 15 or 20 years ago? This game wouldn't be anything special. We all know the type. Edgy protagonist, absolutely BTFOs all of his friends, and the meaningless NPCs around them. How will they ever recover? But in the current year, Strangers of Paradise was an absolute breath of fresh air in a sea of chaotic smog. The sheer amount of sociopathic contrivance for every character to believe and follow Jack is certainly fanfiction worthy, but it's never dull, not for a second. Of course, a lot of critics played it and called the plot stupid and nonsensical, totally missing the appeal of why anybody would like a character like Jack in the first place. Yeah, maybe it isn't believable and you're struggling to get immersed, but there's an argument to be made that a game is written like this is even more immersive due to the fact that you know it's just ridiculous and unbelievable. You know the thing fiction kinda really excels at? We're not saying the game's perfect, but no game in recent memory has been this ballsy with its story and Jack was the right man to carry those massive brass balls. Scrappy Doo Award for Worst Character. The nominees are... The entire cast of Saints Row. Do you think we have enough crate paper? Come again? Crate paper. Do we have enough? <laughs> it's crepe paper with a P. Really? Bridget. Cowgirl is fine because I'm a girl. Aloy. What kind of person? How about someone who thinks saving the world is more important than whether your feelings get hurt? Saving the world? That's what I've been doing, Aaron. Tiny Tina. And with that, the Dragon Lord was defeated. I think not. God of War, Ragnarok's entire cast. You're training pickpockets. You know what, Verlin? You reek of cheap mead, and that is by far your most endearing characteristic. The entire cast of Saints Row. I'm radically relatable. It says a lot when, instead of a single character, we just say, fuck it, you're just all shitty characters. A move we usually save only for the worst of the worst, like Sonic Boom, Battleborn, Borderlands 3. Gone are players like Shondi, Pierce, of course Johnny Gat. Instead, it's a shirtless clone of Wrench, the masked guy from Watch Dogs 2 of all things, some random lady who's utterly forgettable, and a token Elon Musk wannabe tech bro? Even the boss isn't spared from the horrible writing. Your player isn't some tough gangster from the hood, or a wizened mastermind, they're a college student whining about debt. You're all bipolar as fuck, too. Going between a generic cast of sitcom characters to psychopaths that gun down a lawyer for being just slightly obnoxious, then trying to be heartfelt over Happy Meal toys? The biggest crime they all partake in is the crime of being unfunny. 
You don't hear the laugh track, but your mind is still playing it. There's enough empty space between dialogue to slip an awkward cough after every line. You'll bitch and moan every time they diffuse a scene into a lukewarm gag, and you'll be begging for a skip button during the mid-mission car rides. The Saints Row cast is so out of touch and unrelatable that you can still smell the pumpkin spice latte some California writer spilled out onto the script, churning out soulless content for their soulless manager to approve. The kids will love it, they swoon. The main characters are so likable and full of personality. Right? Right? The fuck they are. There is but a single saving grace in this mess. The only decent character that can be salvaged, maybe, is the fucking cat. VGA Exclusive Premiere of an old franchise, Stranger of Paradise, Final Fantasy Origin. Sonic Frontiers! Pokemon Legends Arceus! Kirby and a Forgotten Land. Crystal shards, they decided to go with a more dynamic quinoa like camera view, placing Kirby on a 2.5D plane but in a 3D environment. While this still limited Kirby compared to his contemporaries, Hal was able to take advantage of the extra dimension in some respects through the game's unique art style and attention to detail in its environments. Fast forward over 20 years, and Hal finally mustered up the courage to take the 2D training wheels off the pink puff. Not only does this game succeed 64's combinable abilities by introducing upgradable copy abilities, Kirby can now stretch his mouth far and wide to almost swallow a car, a traffic cone, a light bulb, and many other real-world objects. The new opportunities for puzzle solving harken back to how certain copy abilities were used in select areas of previous games, only now taken to a new, occasionally grotesque extreme. And it's not just gameplay where HAL extended their reach. Taking Shiverstar's idea of a post-apocalyptic Earth and running with it helped give this game a unique aesthetic. And Flair that set it apart after the last few 2D Kirby games were criticized for feeling too samey. One can only wonder where Kirby will go in the future. Perhaps it's only a matter of time before the Pink Puff goes open world. In the end, we can agree that this game is a mouthful of fun for fans of the franchise. Chirno's Perfect Math Class Award for Best Edutainment Game of All Time. The nominees are... 
the Oregon Trail. Putt Putt saves the zoo. The Typing of the Dead. Pajama Sam. Where in the world is Carmen San Diego? The Typing of the Dead. Brain Blast! Are we developing shitposting skills or killing time shredding zombies? The Typing of the Dead series has you gadding zombies and typing out an essay at the same time. Every big brain word scratches up another of the mutant undead. Typing Dead Chads transcend common knowledge. Their IQ expands to triple digits every time salad is typed out in rhythmic sequence. It's the definitive typing learning experience, bundled with carnage and bad voice acting. There is no other combination of media that will offer you or others the ideal learning environment. Throw in mod support and official DLCs, and you have endless ways to save the world by demolishing every word and walker in your path. Namige Award for Best Hero Game. The nominees are How a Healthy Hente Administers Public Service. Magical Girl Celestonia. Wolf Girl with You, Full Moon Edition. Sequel Clutch. Rapers, please.
Wolf Girl with You, Full Moon Edition. Auga! And now, the youngest and oldest member of the VGA team debate Liru's victory in Best Iroke. Who the fuck is this? It's Liru. It's never ever. It's here. Okay, but who the fuck is Liru? She's a legend, dude. What anime is she from? <laughs> I don't know. So you're only familiar with her because she was constantly posted by some waifu-obsessed loser in the late 2000s. Yes, but you weren't there, man. This game's been in development since forever. I watched this thing grow up. Something you have yet to do. I can't get excited for some vanilla furry visual novel when there are actual games with actual gameplay on the palette this year. The one year, the one year, we don't have a fucking rants game. And we still have some flavor of the month bullshit writing on name recognition. Well, I mean, it is Liru after all. Yeah, this is why I can't show you old bands like Weezer. It's beyond your time, you don't get it. Yeah, I don't get why we're handing the trophy to some DLC for a game that came out six damn years ago. Six years ago, you couldn't even get boners, dude. Fuck you. Fuck you too. By the way, I'm gonna go download the game now. Yeah, I think I will too. Cool, don't tell me how it goes. VGA exclusive premiere. In 2022, V rating this game as the worst technical blunder in Vidya. Main issues, sky high rate of pop ins, and more performance issues than in any game prior. Can't deny it, it's all true, but everybody still wants to buy it. Game Freak always has a promise for you. It might be a lie, an illusion, but it's there. Just another game. And it keeps the money flowing. My vision is augmented. It's a game where you seethe. And I'm a big seether. the fuck up. Fuck up. We have a city to burn. Now, back to game.
Uh, no. Nominees are Kirby's Dreamland, Sonic the Hedgehog, Chew. The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past. Wolfenstein 3D! Eva, auf Wiedersehen! Super Mario Kart! The numbers are in. Link to the Past, a smash hit that we've gone many rounds with, and in many different ways, even when some of us couldn't understand it. It took elements from both of its prequels, like hidden paths and multiplane dungeons, but streamlined them to be less obtuse, yet keep them intriguing. Progress now focused less on grinding cash or points, and more on reaching new obstacles and seeking out tools to get past them. The dungeons became unique, and the solutions to puzzles weren't always obvious, nor was what would happen when you solved them. Even then, the enemies don't make it easy, and neither do the bosses. The fights became more heated, and required a keen eye and a cool head to prevail. It's no shock that all this left a big impact. Its landslide success was a challenge for other devs to match Nintendo, but also inspired fans to later honor them. Today, this game might feel a bit on rails and easy to speed through. Part of that comes from how we've learned to best deal with its threats and its familiar tricks. That said, it's still worth coming back to. This wouldn't be the last time we stick it to Ganon, but this game definitely set the gold standard for all future Zelda games. It still remains beloved by generations, since 1992 and perhaps forevermore. Except those fucking tile rooms! Oh, the tiles! Who the hell thought that shit was a good idea? If I ever meet the guy who suggested them, I'm gonna shove my Pegasus shoes up his ass! I don't give a damn how old he is now! Um, this is my PowerPoint award for best power uh, vi visual novel? So, yeah, the, the nominees are, um, nine hours, nine persons, nine doors, stains, um, semicolon gate, ka, 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 so, Right, Ace Attorney Trials and Tribulations. Ominico, when they cry. The sweep points are in. Eight. 
And the winner is... Best visual novel of all time on a site like 4chan is a hard thing to discuss. Considering this award is more culturally relevant for JP, discussion doesn't typically take place on V. 999 has mind-bending puzzles and an even more mind-bending premise. Fata Morgana enraptures readers with its non-traditional storytelling. Danganronpa requires the player to manually explore your environment and find the truth through stylized minigames. While Katawa Shoujo had the home field advantage, being the most atypical romance novel crafted from a weird little corner of the internet. Despite all the incredible opposition, Phoenix Wright always has us dying to return back to the walls of its kangaroo court. On the surface, Phoenix Wright's low budget can seem like an immense detriment, but every penny is spent with the smartest dedication to presentation and direction. In a genre where most other games just play a single music track in the background with the same looping CGs as the text scrolls by on auto, a single press of the A button in Phoenix Wright can give you satisfying screen shakes, reactive character animations, dynamic music integration, and deafening OBJECTIONS! adding more to the visual part of Visual Novel. All this effort puts emphasis on all the right places, with the prosecution and witnesses squirming in their seats after you effectively pull the rug out from under them. Their animations delight as you crush their composure with your intuition. It's incredibly satisfying, immersive, and elevates Ace Attorney games above their contemporaries. Trials and Tribulations was supposed to be Phoenix's last hurrah from director Shu Takumi, who put everything he had into this title. The origins of series regulars are revealed, as well as the recurring storyline in the Fae Clan comes to a shocking conclusion as it delivers some of the biggest narrative heights of the series. You'll need at least 37 cups of your favorite dark roast just to get through all of it, but not a single drop is wasted. Press X to win the award for Worst Gameplay. The nominees are... Stray. Overwatch 2. My life. Saints Row. Good talking to you. I gotta do another neighborhood control. Diablo Immortal. God of War Ragnarok. Now what? I'm gonna try to tame it. Tame it. Freak out, yo! Diablo Immortal Premium Oh, Blizzard. Blizzard, Blizzard, Blizzard. You just can't catch a break, can you? The announcement of this mobile abortion heralded the beginning of the end for this once great company. So, now that the dust has settled, what are we working with here? If you look up guides on Diablo Immortal, somewhere out there you're going to find a spreadsheet whose sole purpose is to help you balance your time enjoying the game while using as little money as possible on Blizzard's predatory monetization model. There is gameplay here, but it's muddled, disgraced, and ugly by the game's infinite grind while pushing in-app purchases the same way Blizzard management pushes themselves on female interns. It's not just bad game design, it's sinister. But that wasn't a surprise, 
Blizzard has been languishing with their games. Dragonflight's lackluster reception, Overwatch 2's equally obnoxious nickel and diming, hell, even in this show, the Modern Warfare 2 remake only managed to squeak a nomination in guilty pleasure because it couldn't qualify for a single positive award. Maybe Blizzard can still make some good games, but their blatant attempts at whale hunting smother any good gameplay they could manage to create. With Diablo 4 right around the corner, may Diablo help us. Freddie Mercury Award for Best Musical Sequence of All Time. The nominees are so Snake so Eater, I give my life. Escape from the City, <laughs> DK Rap. Rules of Nature. It has to be this way. Okay. Let's dance. Freak out, yo! It has to be this way. Don't fuck with this, Senator! Making the mother of all omelets here, Jack. Can't spread over every egg. <laughs> Why won't you die? Can't hurt me, Jack. So we have all the exclusive PS5 games. Take it easy, Max. You don't even like games. Oh yeah! VGA Exclusive Premiere
delicious sidewinders, those restaurant mini missiles everyone loves. No more squishing and squashing, or fighting and foxing. With the sidewinder station, just aim, lock and band it down right from your cockpit. The unique design cooks both sides of the bandit at once, so you never have to flip them, and in just two minutes, you'll have five mouthwatering victory marks. Use when bandits barrel roll. Try when displacement rolling, any pursuit. You can double or triple launch them, and watch your buddies attack them. Top with pickles, onions, ketchup, or cheese. Big city sidewinders are sure to please. The double-sided infrared homing surface is so slick, not even burnt on chaff will stick. Whether it's Wizard, Espada, or Schwartz, just aim, lock, and band it down. No air braking and no hassle. Call now and receive the Big City Sidewinder Station with chaff bonus bag for just $19.99. We'll also include the keys to the Belkin nuclear arsenal, loaded with my favorite weapons of war, like the barbecue bacon border bender and the original pixie purger free. But call right now, and we'll send you the basic fighter maneuvers handbook. A $20 value free, you get it all, Big City Sidewinder Station, chaff bonus bag, nuclear arsenal, and handbook, all for just $19.99. Order right now. The King of V was successful. This was all part of our plan, wasn't it, Anon? Sorry, Quentin. It was wrong to play the 3DS in public. You were right, and I should have listened. Moot. Sorry about the Australians. Thanks for sticking with us. Until the end. Anons of V, these are our threads now. I won't let Barry use them as his plaything. Those of you who love Stranger of Paradise, never give up hope. The steam release will come one day. Porque yo soy el género, el rey del género, porque en este género yo soy el rey del género, porque en el género de los géneros yo soy el el dios de los géneros. Yo soy el que mandó Dios para ser el rey del género, porque en esta vaina yo soy el rey del género. Óyeme bien, pa' que te peguen el tren, pero espérate, que yo voy también, te voy a colarte, que donde estamos está bien, encuérate, trátame bien. Mueve la gatín, sopate el pullín, pullín, métete en el ring con el ting tong ting, te quiero pa' mí, pa' dejarte clean, bien limpia, y quiero que me bañe a mí, ven brinca, creo que es una araña allí, ven, déjame cuidarte de los insectos con este ring, porque tengo un bote, gigante de gigante, y tengo un lote, vamos a conocernos a de esos desboches, tengo mi suelo para la silla de la noche, pam, pam, furia, dale, pam, pam, furia, quiero que
players that don't hit you like I do, kid. I used to be a fighter in the street, and now I'm just a writer on the beat. I speak to reach higher than a lighter in a piece, at least, but not last. Give a fuck about cash at last. I got thoughts to jot while there's a Rottweiler, a root that grows from those who rot inside of a spot opposite of a hot box. Not high, you're fresh to death, so do it for the money, but not I. And your bullshit is something I cannot buy. I'm broke as a joke, yeah, but at least I get the punchline. Trying to kickstart this shit all at one time, but not having a fun time finding people to fund mine. Can't book a show without a CD, can't press an album with no press, no less than three months to advise these punks about the project so they can. Tell Seattle, then I'm on deck. Am I on yet? Can't fuck with me when I'm on set, cause I'm rapping solely for change and you're selling out for some objects. Fuck your heavy rotation, fuck a radio station. This is Neolithic rap, bitch, I'm paleo Jason. Natural thinker, you're synthetic, so save the ovation. Your deepest thoughts are so pathetic, I see the frustration. Now welcome to my planet, I'll leave when I'm right handed. We said goodbye to Whitney, now wave goodbye, Janet, cause I'm about to my function. I think we've come to the junction. Cause you say you spitting bars, all I'm hearing is suction. Rapping is nothing, you ain't with half. For the sack I was fretting Like my mom, I swear to God I'ma smack you with something So stop playing tough I'ma buy you a Tonka Crouch low, I'm electric They feel me like Blanca Cause I used to be a fighter for a fee Now I'm living in Seattle And I'm higher than a peak Yeah Johnny uh. Giuliano Dot What's up, baby? Yeah Oh yeah, you know how to make something for you It's finally right uh, let's go. I try to tell you so many times. I'm yeah. your biggest fan. That's yeah. right. Listen. Uh, I appreciate you, girl. That's an everything. Yes. And what you mean to me? Everything. Yeah. I'm thankful I was at the right place at the right time. Yeah. I set the right line. Now that ass is mine. Uh, ooh, I promise that I love this feeling. Yeah. Daydreaming by us, having children, yeah. doing vacays, trying to melt the stress away. Uh, I call you by your nickname or I call you babe. Hey, babe. And I don't feel comfortable with just anybody. True. But I know deep down, yeah, that's somebody that's right. that I'll need forever. Yes. I promise that I'll never, uh -uh. I mean, I'll never ever do you like how he did. Uh. Uh, baby, that ain't my staff. I wanna work extra hard just to see you smile. Cause it's feeling here with something ain't had in a while. But I'm thankful that I got you now. Uh, that's right. I told you. Go.
Hey baby, I hear the blues are calling Toss salads and scrambled eggs Quite stylish And maybe I seem a bit confused Yeah, maybe, but I got you pegged Ha, 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 ha But I don't know what to do with those Toss salads and scrambled eggs They're calling again Award for most pretentious indie game. The nominees are I was a teenage exocolonist. Should a Christian play it at all? Right out of the gate, we trip over an issue that will be a problem for me. We are OFK. Do you want to see an owl? I be seeing an owl. Stray. As dusk falls, play this. You just saw the trailer two years ago and creamed your pants when you saw the femboy. For better or worse, you are still right. We Are OFK is an incredibly dull experience, showing us how it feels to be four people in Southern California trying to make the band. And they do that by giving us the most boring, unintuitive, and shallow origin story possible. There's no point in your choices. Gameplay is just minor changes to the text, and each chapter ends with a music video you can barely interact with. These small bits are the payoff for some of the most self-centered, insecure, and downright cringe-tastic dialogue ever put in a VN. In fact, some of these characters are so privileged and financially comfortable that they have to invent new conflicts so that they can move the plot along. To make it short, We Are OFK is the most pretentious game that none of you played. For the few who did, our condolences. 
The Last of Us Award for the best The Last of Us. The nominees are The Last of Us, The Last of Us Part 2, The Last of Us TV Show, The Last of Us Part 1. The upcoming Last of Us multiplayer thing. The Last of Us Remastered. And the winner is The Last of Us Part 1. Don't you love The Last of Us? The Last of Us is so good. It's my favorite game, remake, remaster, sequel, and TV show. It'll also be my favorite multiplayer game. I just love the series. Don't you love hearing about The Last of Us? Your life was nothing until you played The Last of Us. TV was SHIT! Until The Last of Us came out on HBO. Neil Druckmann's my hero for creating The Last of Us. The Last of Us is all I care about. My wife left me because I paid more attention to The Last of Us than I did to her. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, uh, I want to, uh... FUCK! My copy of The Last of Us. <laughs> VGA exclusive premiere. Transmission from the resistance. The skeleton army have begun their global takeover of America. The new world orders. Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. And what he do? And he's gonna react to all the self snitching. Oh. Welcome to another fun filled episode of Criminal Lawyer Reacts. I'm Bruce Rivers, board certified criminal defense lawyer. Today we're reacting to Justin Roiland. Justin Roiland is uh, a big part of uh, Rick and Morty, and it's a popular cartoon. He's got some domestic assault charges, and he's got some disturbing messages with a 16-year-old girl. Let's listen to this conversation that Mr. Roiland had. Would you do video game reviews and stuff like that? I bet you'd do good. Then once you turn 18, you just start cam whoring. Why are you such jailbait? What's wrong with you in that regard? You should just grow older, you dumb bitch. Oh my god, your nipples are pierced. A bunch of creepy heart eye emojis because preying on the weak gives me an erection. <clears throat> so anyways, uh, I'm not a pedophile though. I do follow I'm a the law. Generally speaking, when you have to profess you're not something, you probably are. Uh -huh. I wait till they're 18 if, 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 if. I wait till they're 18. Who the fuck? Who, who says shit like this? This is a self snitch if I've ever heard it. There's just never a situation where you put your hands on a woman. I'm old fashioned. Uh, that's just a hard and fast rule for me. And guys should follow that rule. So he had the world by the balls. Pardon the pun. Uh, and now, and now it's gone. Bruce Rivers just broke down your case He know all the charges that you about to face You ain't coming home till 2058 That self snitching gonna get you put away How lonely do you have to be to join some online bullshit that, that is just nothing Nothing Ugh Guys Check the mic and make sure it sound right boys Hate Machine Award. 
for Crimes Against Gaming. The nominees are... China. Do you have a license to sell these games? Activision Blizzard. Hey, bro! What I want to buy? Microtransactions and gotcha fucking games. Pay my child's, like, entire schooling to the age of 18? Plastic statues NFTs. with NFTs. How cool is that? I mean, it's such Stop a... Stop trying to make NFTs happen. It's not going to happen. No, 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 we call it coming out SJWs. Of so many people are afraid to admit that their life is a mess, and so it keeps them stuck. Because they're told that freak out, yo. SJWs. This will go over well. Ah, the rest of the world finally caught up to the Something Awful forums, using 4chan as a conduit or a scapegoat for other means. If you look at the actual voting data, nobody gave a fuck about Hogwarts Legacy, and nobody gave a fuck about Bridget. These are threads created by tourists, for tourists, to win internet arguments on other sites, and, this may surprise you, have nothing to do with video games. When one of these ludicrous proxy wars finds its way to 4chan, they are promptly blasted by V for forcing their way into the conversation. When screenshots of V's reaction go to Twitter or Discord, those users feel a smug sense of superiority over the people whose time they've wasted. In the end, everyone gets what they want. Something to complain about. If there is anything to thank you for, it's for maintaining the legend of the 4chan boogeyman. A website so terrifying and offensive that normies dare not tread. You keep them out for us, and you do it for free. Redemption Arc Award for Biggest Redemption in Gaming. The nominees are... Cyberpunk 2077 Capcom Sonic Frontiers Mick Gordon Bandai Namco Mick Gordon Face your doom! A familiar figure on V and on the VGAs, composer of the best OST of 2016 and 2020, chosen by you. Mick's works on the Doom series with Bethesda are well known, but what was not well known was the usual shittiness of Bethesda extending not only to their customers and games, but also to their contractors. Bethesda, like any huge company, thought they could get one over on a smaller creator. This all stemmed from a really public showcase of pettiness by the id Software director, blaming Mick for the apparent mess around the soundtrack, basically killing Mick's public image as a professional music composer, which later also exposed their private attempts at miscrediting and underpaying him for his work. The trophies Mick earned are on display at their offices. Luckily, Mick is a patient and organized man, so when it came time to properly explain the situation, he did it directly, clearly, and at a level of professionalism that Bethesda and id Software probably never could muster. In fact, 
This award is less about Mick making a comeback and more about Bethesda and id Software putting the little guy through hell. Rock on, Mickey. Hey man, I know you've been down in the dumps lately, ever since Donut Donut didn't make in the last VGAs. So I got ya a Steam Deck. Now you cannot outside. What? I said you cannot outside. Steam Deck, you can nut outside. Come on. <clears throat> yeah, you don't freaking matter. Come on, you stupid piece of shit. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> In this matriarchal society, all women are queens, or shall we say, gods. Everybody is looking for a maiden for power and comfort. The game showcases several ways by which characters' lust for power and want for love lead to most of the conflicts. There's a wide variety of women that cater to both every fetish and every type of relationship, from Melina's aloof personality and tsundere tendencies to Hayata's weird eye thing to Fia's apparent necrophilia. In fact, if you extend the idea to all NPCs, the game caters to several other tastes. Raya to the Monster Girl White Knights, Millicent to the amputee enthusiasts, Aurelia for the jellyfish fuckers, America for the Oedipus complexes, the list goes on. 
There's a female NPC for every fantasy in Elden Ring. Even the most degenerate fantasy of all. Marriage. Van Dark Home Award for Best Representation of Men. The nominees are Elden Ring. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure All Star Battle R. Yes. Stranger of Paradise. Shut the fuck Final up. Fantasy Origin. The King of Fighters, 15. Warhammer, 40k, oh Dark Is there a tiger in your pocket, or are you just happy to see me? Freak out, yo! Stranger of Paradise. Show yourself! Lost the demons in a fight. They sent me flying on my ass. The chaos beat me. That won't stand. That bitch is gonna feel my wrath. Like a hunger, like a thirst. Stay back or you jerks are first. I awoke and my memory's gone, but I'm sending chaos to oblivion. Chaos had been turned into a white-haired girl. White-haired girl! Don't believe her when she calls it a fairy tale. Fairy tale! Chaos, 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 chaos. I'm coming up to chaos in an odd land. Your name. Garland. My name's Jack Garland. Jack, Jack, Jack. Please, you have to wake up, Jack. You have been in a coma for quite some time. We need you. We don't know how to reach you. We need you, please. The coma, please wake up. Diamond in the Rough Award for Best Game That Nobody Played. The nominees are Spark the Electric Jester 3, Frogon, Ghostwire Tokyo. Freedom Planet 2 Postal Brain Damage Ribbit Ribbit Step 1 Frog Step 2 Gun A premise so simple it almost fits onto an LCD from Tiger Electronics. Pro Gun succeeds in reminding us of the simpler days of video games where the graphics were colorful, the gameplay was tight, the collectibles were everywhere, and the plot was merely an excuse to keep things moving. The modest Kickstarter goal was met within two hours. 
and went on to earn six times that. Mascot platformers may be an old genre, but there's still some magic in the formula when you mix a spunky protagonist with charming aesthetics and sound design. You might compare this to Shovel Knight, which also evokes an earlier age of gaming while removing the jank. Well, most of the jank. Much like Renata herself, playing this game might leave you with a big, goofy smile. Good evening, buyers. Welcome to the Paul Allen Award auction for the best box art of all time. Now, I ask you to take your seats before we bring out these wonderful artworks. Our first showcase is the U.S. box art for Deus Ex, released in 2000 and developed by Ionstorm. This sample was well ahead of its time and defined the early 2000s art style. Our second showcase is Metal Gear Solid 2's U.S. box art. Released one year after Deus Ex, Hideo Kojima stunned the world with a video game box art that truly respected the term art. The third showcase for this evening is Eco's box art that was published in Japan and Europe in 2001 and 2002 respectively. This box art design was too tasteful for Americans and upon audience testing would often leave them confused and speechless. It was then established that the United States truly had no taste. Our fourth showcase is the mystery of the Druids' U.S. box art design that was more appealing to the feeble American mind, though in my opinion, is kind of funny. And last but not least, the OG Doom, published in 1993, a box art design that defined the game even if you knew nothing about it. A revolutionary game with groundbreaking art to go with it, truly a wonder of its time. Now, I must be honest with you, I kind of lied about the auction shit to get as many of you into the room as I could. The results are... Throw it flashbang! Doom with 826 sweet points. Let me say a little something about Doom. It fucking rules. That soundtrack kicks fucking ass. I could listen to that shit all night long playing this game into the wee hours of the morning while my mother begs me to turn the computer off because we're spending too much on the power bill. I say, fuck you, mother. I'm ripping and tearing. And unless you join me also, you can get fucked and keep bringing in those delicious chicken tendies. Oh, God, how I miss her cooking. It's a shame, really, that time moves faster than we do ourselves. But enough weeping. Let's continue fucking shit up. Cinematech Award for Best Game of 2002.
Metroid Prime was an important game for the series, and an important game in everyone's past. Getting lost on Talon 4, shaping up from all your suit upgrades, and the days spent molded into the couch so you get bragging rights for earning the best ending. It was also the series' first time in Western developers' hands. Retro Studios brought forth a fresh new perspective on Samus and the Metroid franchise. For newcomers, it was just another solid entry in the GameCube collection. For fans and others, it was an ideal adaptation bringing Samus to 3D, and the start of an impressive series that begs another sequel. Please? We'll be back with more Video Game Awards after this. VGA Exclusive Premiere Since the dawn of our show's existence, we've always talked about one thing. A physical award to send to the winners and losers of our show. And this year, we finally made it. For real. Actually, we fucked up the first one, but we adapted. We made it worse and turned it into our technical blunder award, complete with spelling mistakes and tape poorly holding it together. Both will be sent to their respective winners after the show. Updates on our socials. See you around. Seal, Seal of Quality, Quality Award. Award for Biggest Technical Blunder. The nominees are Babylon's Fall. Saints Row. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. The Callisto Protocol. Dot O of the game. Roll the credits and the trophy is yours. Thanks for watching. Pokemon Legends Arceus. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Gnarly! As of this writing, Pokemon as a franchise has grossed $71 billion. That's somehow what you get for releasing a game like this in such a ramshackle state. Pokemon's been on a downward spiral ever since it left the 3DS. Let's Go was a red flag, followed by the fiasco that was Sword and Shield. Disregarding Arceus, Scarlet and Violet continue this trend by becoming one of the best-selling console-exclusive video games of all time. It didn't just sell 10 million copies. It sold 10 million copies in three days. Because Pokemon fans, young and old, keep eating this garbage no matter how bad it tastes. 
This kind of busted launch is the new normal for overhyped money printers. But unlike Cyberpunk or No Man's Sky, there's little hope of a patch coming to fix things. V was flooded with GIFs and clips of the game's many, many glitches, some of which managed to make Sword and Shield look stable. Taking into account that they turned out three major releases in a year's time, we can see why the quality from Game Freak has become so staggeringly bad. Pokemon games with explorable 3D worlds have existed as far back as Pokemon Coliseum, and despite barely upgrading the models or textures in 20 years, suddenly the game is twisting and morphing into eldritch forms, begging to be released from its painful existence. When catching Pokemon, the camera may choose to look away entirely, Maybe because it really enjoys a low-res tree that just popped into the distance. Or maybe because it can't live with itself, the weight of its expectations, and the weight of its failures. We, too, can only ponder what brought us here to the downward spiral of Game Freak and of Pokémon entirely. Hello, everybody. This is the next target. You wouldn't believe where you could find this 2001 Toyota Corolla somewhere on Mount Crosby Road, but it doesn't matter because this is the Morbius Sweep Award for the worst game nobody played. The nominees are because no one actually voted on this, so who gives a fuck? Hello, neighbor two. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, Tim Tam, but I, I just thought Tim Tam, so I just put you know the Tim Tam footage in. Yeah, I thought that was just appropriate. Uh, this is Soul Hackers 2. Um, I didn't want to show any footage for this game, but this is pretty Soul. You know those 2007 clips about hackers and shit? Whatever. Uh, Ghost Simulator 3! You, yeah, it was kind of funny the first time around, but uh, I'm not really laughing these days. Anyway, Nintendo Switch Sports? Uh, let's get the Steam Deck. <laughs> <laughs> you can fucking emulate the, emulate the games on, on, on the Nintendo Switch. Oh, uh, it doesn't even, it doesn't matter. Uh, look, I unvoted and because, like, I made this go from 1 to 2, it, it's just completely, uh, fucked up to this. <laughs> oh, this is so fucking corny. Yeah, alright, Morbius wins. Uh, Jared Leto's a fucking legend. <laughs> Unlock. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Oh, let me put my straight face on. God. Oh, Morbius is so fucking shit. But by the way, um, can I just say, <laughs> I don't even know why this didn't uh, go up for, uh, go up to vote. Just go fuck yourself. I've been doing this shit for what, 11 years now? Let, let's, uh, well, actually, like, when did this shit start? Technically, we had the 2000. And 11 awards, but they didn't really stream until 2012. You see, this is the fuck thing about this show. We, we, we concentrate on the year beforehand. Like, this is 2023, right? Like, video games have already released, and it's like, what, fucking March? And, um, and, and we're talking about 2022. Oh, uh, yeah, you know. Uh, anyway, Jared Leto, he, he pisses me off. Um, he's the most pretentious actor that anyone has ever seen in Hollywood. I think, um, I, I think he's so fucking dumb. He's always like bitching about how no one likes him and shit um oh. and, and then like he bitched about working phoenix's uh fucking joker portrayal because it was a lot better than his oh i don't even fucking know anymore his best performance was getting fucking killed in american psycho i think he should do that again american psycho three they already made a number two and that sucked ass but we could forget about that i mean like you know modern day game developers will just make a fucking number one like you know the first iteration of a game all over again with a different story and still say you know it's the first version of that fucking title that came out fucking years ago <clears throat> oh, who cares anymore Dearest, I've spent the last 15 years complaining about video games on the internet. 
One of these days I will empty the piss bottles and leave this basement with a pep in my step. But that's for the future. And the sun hurts my eyes. God, I wish you were real. Golden Snub Award for Best Game to Never Win a Video Game Award. You need to shut the fuck up. Up, 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 up. Your, and your fantasies can't ever be quenched, can they? You freaking bricks! What will you learn? What will you learn? That your actions have consequences! He never scored. <laughs> what a loser, 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 loser. Into the trash it goes, 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 goes. VGA exclusive premiere.
Born a Metal Souls Award for Most Formidable Opponent. The nominees are... Pokemon Trainer Red. Virgil 3. Undertale. Kefka. Gygus. lost power, Virgil will stop at nothing to make sure he gets what he wants, even if it means one last bout with his twin brother. Being the older twin of the Sons of Sparta, Virgil's appearance throughout the game strikes fear in the player as each encounter sees him evolve. From a one-on-one -on -one battle on top of a tower, to the tower's ritual chamber, and finally culminating right in front of the gate to hell itself. Equipped with not only his famous Yamato, Virgil now has control of Force Edge, the legendary sword Sparta used in the war against hell. This new blade makes him the most formidable opponent, sporting brand new moves in every fight to give the player fits. Virgil was actually on the ballot last year, as the only contender that wasn't from a Souls Ring-like or one of the good movie games. And he is back, and more motivated than ever. Had the Bionicle dream again last night. I was walking through Toys R Us, the sweet, savory smell of pizza in the air and the electric buzz of days gone by in my heart. I came across the Lego aisle and was greeted by rows and rows of Bionicle Kanoe mask packs and cylinders of unknown and unseen figures. A tear came to my eye as I fell to the floor with my head sunk down. I was finally home. When I finally looked up, all I could see was Onua Fortnite dancing and dabbing over me as the morning cock awoke me from this heaven. Hey gamers, it's time for the lightning round. Iliad Award for Best Writing. Stranger of Paradise, Final Fantasy Origin. Pottery Award for Worst Writing. Saints Row. Guilty Pleasure Award for the game I like but V hates. Multiverses. Aesthetics Award for Best Visual Aesthetics. Elden Ring. Visual Award is my passion for Worst Visual Aesthetics. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Hyperbole Award for Best Trailer of 2022. Armored Core 6, Fires of Rubicon. Hello Fellow Posters Award for Most Blatantly Promoted Video Game Product. Genshin Impact. Haptic Feedback Award for Best Gameplay. Elden Ring. New Challenger Award for Best New IP. Elden Ring. Prove Me Wrong Award for Least Anticipated Game of 2023. Forspoken. Please Be Good Award for Most Anticipated Game of 2023 and Beyond. Dragon's Dogma 2. V. 
VGA Throwback. Least Worst Award for Least Worst Game of the Year. Number 5. XCOM Enemy Unknown. Number 4. Katawa Shoujo. Number 3. Sleeping Dogs. Number 2. Hotline Miami. And the winner is... The Walking Dead. While other games floundered in a sea of hype they couldn't possibly live up to, The Walking Dead came out of nowhere and carved its own niche. Bolstered by word of mouth and some well-timed Steam sales, a zombie-themed point-and-click adventure found itself the talking point of almost all gaming circles, each claiming to have been the first ones to discover it. Hipsters. Taking a reasonably well-known setting from the Walking Dead comic series, Telltale succeeded in adapting the IP to the gaming medium, without constructing a rushed, horrible cash-in like so many others. I've got my eye on you, Activision. Attempting something new with a tired zombie formula, Telltale created a story-driven game with purpose, and with characters that even the most cynical, jaded assholes could connect to on some level or another. Despite some bugs, especially with mobile ports, we see a fresh update to the adventure game user interface, which works well. Closely beating its polar opposite runner-up, Hotline Miami, The Walking Dead has awarded our least hated award for giving us an engaging, modest title amongst a year of disappointment. Most Hated Award for Most Hated Game of the Year. The nominees are... Overwatch 2. Diablo Immortal. The Last of Us, Part 1. God of War, Ragnarok. Saints Row. First fucking day! Everyone thought that Saints Row had reached its maximum in its fourth iteration when you fought off an alien invasion as the President of the United States. But Volition outdid themselves. This time, they rocked the boat by forgetting what made the series stand out in the first place. The result is a soulless attempt to rebrand the identity of a 16-year-old franchise into whatever a bunch of lazy investors think the kids are into, while still being mired in mid-2000s crime sandbox gameplay design. No Johnny Gad, no Stillwater, and a new cleaner and duller Saints Row image to match the spineless writers who seem to have done it all deliberately in spite of the fans. After six months of delay, it released to a wet fart of fanfare. The gameplay is basic, the sandbox is more cardboard than sand, and worst of all, the many, many bugs on day one that range from cars being launched to the climax being funnier but not on purpose. Actually, let's dive deeper into this. Consider last year's winner for most hated, Grand Theft Auto, and their hackneyed so-called remastered version of their classics. Every franchise in existence must now have some sort of reboot, remake, remaster that resurrects the dead and puppets their corpse for people to throw their money at. It wasn't that the game couldn't be good, more like it was doomed to be bad. A blatant by the numbers release that checks a ton of boxes but serves no greater creative purpose. They didn't end up getting away with it, not with the reception they got. But this won't reverse the greater trend we've seen in movies, television, music, and now video games where we are being told to forget about old, perfectly fine and enjoyable products and to please come quickly to consume 
new product. Dead Space is perfectly playable on modern platforms, but right now we have seen both an unnecessary remake and an unnecessary reboot from the original creator released just a month apart. Somewhere, alone in a private office, an executive for a major game publisher is crawling through mountains of data, praying to an algorithm as if it were some kind of god, seeking any way to justify the last five years spent without any meaningful human contact. Money, power, it has to be here somewhere. Family, sports, walking outside? No, I gave all of those up a long time ago. For the money and the power, they have to be here somewhere. My sacrifices cannot have gone in vain. I'm barely human now. It has to have been for something. I can't wait for all of you to fuck off. What are you looking for? Huh? Least Worst Award for Least Worst Game of the Year. The nominees are Signalis, Elden Ring, Kirby and the Forgotten Land. Neon White Stranger of Paradise Final Fantasy Origin Elden Ring. Uh, let's do it. Creme de la creme. Yeah. Oh, Elden Ring. Was there ever any doubt you would win? Miyazaki blows the world away by selling Demon Souls for the sixth time. But this time it's been improved with an open world that puts most open worlds to shame. FromSoft's years of experience creating smooth action RPGs have come to a head with Elden Ring giving us a Souls game that constantly delivers an atmosphere and exploration. From accidentally teleporting to Kaled, to riding an elevator downward for a full minute to Siofra River, to reaching Atlas Plateau and seeing Lanedale in the distance, Elden Ring instills a sense of wonder that puts it at the pinnacle of open world games. The combat is smooth and varied, the bosses are as over the top as ever. So over the top, in fact, that normies and journos were crying mimic tears. And the lore has that classic FromSoft layer of obfuscation. It's not just an open world Souls game, it's an open world game with soul. That's it. Global Acquisitions Group has been thrown the fuck out of our city. Now that Gag is gone, I guess it's time to watch all these gangs rip the shit out of each other. They'll probably end up merging together and making another giant multinational in a few years, wouldn't that be funny? <clears throat> anyway, we hope you enjoyed watching the show. As usual, we put a ridiculous amount of effort into this monstrosity every year, and we appreciate you wasting an hour of your short, smelly, precious, Cheeto-encrusted life with us. You, uh, you washed your feet lately? Thanks for watching, and have fun. We have everything you need to live the young, hip, jet grind radio lifestyle. You skate, you groove, you bomb bricks, and run from the man. Jet grind radio, on Dreamcast, ready people, team.
12 angry viewers tell you what they think. I want videos to make me feel something. What they really think. The song was fairly monotonous. What they really, really, really think. It sucks. About MTV's newest videos. And if they don't make the grade, they throw them out. <laughs> Twelve angry viewers. They'll make you or break you. Step up. Yo, your turn. Step up. I'll show you how. Step up. Well, look out now. You just can't beat the power pack taste of Sunny D. Unleash the power of the sun. Departure destination, a global millennium. New York City, Rio, Buenos Aires, Los Angeles, Honolulu, Sydney, Singapore, Moscow, Berlin, London, New York City. Fly 2K, enjoy your trip, boarding soon. アミコっていうラブルの入ってある Oh shit, we forgot the basket weaving tips. <clears throat> uh, take a look at this basket from the Egyptian Empire, made during the Ramesside period, roughly 1200 BCE. Notice the patterns weaved into the basket with coloured palm grass. Not only does it look nice, it also closes gaps between the coiled bundles, resulting in a more resilient and sealed basket, suitable for carrying powdery substances. You can still do this today, so give it a shot and don't let us know how it goes. <laughs> 